Welcome back to IASTEC. Tailwind CSS is a utility first CSS framework that makes creating complex responsive layouts incredibly fast and easy. In this deep dive video, we will learn how Tailwind helps us build robust and flexible layouts using intuitive flexbox and css grid utilities before we dive in let's discuss the benefits of using tailwind per layout so tailwind uses naturally language class names like flex justify center and grid calls three that are very easy to remember easily make any utility responsive with prefixes like md lg or others no need for any complex media queries tailwind classes allow you to build uis faster without context switching to css so it is great for agile team tailwind is highly customizable easily modify spacing colors breakpoints and more as long as class names stay the same tailwind utilities will work even as framework evolve let's start with a quick flex box refresher to create a flex box container you just need to add a class flex so this is my project that is currently running in the browser so here i will first create a simple div and add something to it right now this is the flex i will add a class flex by adding this class this will apply display flex style to the div element to align items horizontally we use the justify utilities like justify center so for example let me uh, add some background color okay i will add some width also i will add some height text to white now let's add some alignment class that is justify center with that you can see it is in the center you can also use the justify and that will push it to the right edge to align vertically we use item center so this will bring it in the middle we can also try item end and this will push it to the bottom you can also change the flex direction with the flex row or flex call class so let me show you how it is possible okay let me give it some classes okay i have added some border so now by default if you add flex class to the parent then it automatically uses the flex row class uh, or row direction for that parent by default so if you want to change that you just set flex column With that, you will see that it is now vertically aligned. So you can also uh, specifically set the flex row to change the direction back to the row. So there are many more utilities like these that you can see from the doc uh, from the documentation for full list. So let's use Flexbox to build a responsive navigation bar. So for that, I will again come here and let me delete everything a tag nav and i will add few classes to it flex okay now uh, let us add some content in it this div is going to have class font bold i asked tag all right after that i will add another list so we make nav a flex container justify content between start and end align item center and add padding colors add padding and colors the nav links are also flex box container with the space x4 horizontal spacing this creates a nice mobile friendly nav bar using intuitive utilities so this is what you can see right now let me increase the width to make it look better so here i will add screen all right so you can see that our simplest nav bar is ready so let me re remove the item center from the top so that we could add it to the top okay you can see that nav bar is ready and it is on the top that is looking great i can also get rid of this gradient as well okay now let's take a look at a css grid to to start a grid use the grid class so that is also very simple thing so after the nav i will add a div and then inside that div you will add grid items so this uh, grid class sets display grid on the parent and then we will define columns with the grid calls utilities for example you can use grid calls 3 
that makes three equal columns so let's give it a try so i already have added the grid class and after that i will add grid calls three and here i will add three divs column one column two column three okay now let's try that you can see that the columns are visible here with uh, three equal width you can also check from the inspect element so you can see every column is taking equal width i will also add some background color okay you can also increase the height as well and we also have an option gap to add some gap okay we can also add that text center you can also add flex again to bring everything in the middle but we are using grid so i will not use that at this moment but you can individually add the uh, flex in the columns if you want to use so you can change the sizes so instead of three i can set two in th that way it will have only two column in one row and it will automatically overflow the next column to the next row for you you can also set one uh, you can see now there is only one column in one row you can make changes and it will adjust itself automatically you can also make grid response with the breakpoint uh, prefixes like md so for example with the md that means uh, e the layouts that are equal to md are greater than md size this is the you can see the dimension 768 pixel width of the screen then uh, it will apply uh, three columns grid if you uh, decrease the width less than that then it will uh, if it, this uh, class would not be applied anymore so for example let me reload it so you can also set a default one so for example grid calls one so by default it will be using the so by default it would be using the grid calls one so if you increase the width then the specified that is 767 pixels then it will use the uh, specified columns preference that is three columns per row so you can also set it to two so by default it can stay two in the smaller screen but if you are in the larger screen then it will increase the number of columns so let me add few more and now i can add few more settings like lg should have grid calls four and excel should be grid calls five so let's give it a try you can see that it will use different kind of configuration depending on the screen size so this is the smallest screen that is going to use two columns if you increase it a little bit further in the medium size it is using the three columns in the large it is using four columns per row and in the extra large it is using five columns per row so there are lots more feature likes auto fit grid areas and more that you can find out from the uh, documentation that yeah, they have provided on their website so it's a good resource to look at so now let's create a responsive photo gallery with the css grid so i'm going to get rid of this one for now and let's create a new div from scratch and i will give it some classes like grid grid calls 3 cap 2 md grid calls 6 grid calls 12 okay so here i have added a grid and i am specifying that there should be three columns per row and there should be a gap of two between every column and uh, if the size is equal to 768 pixels or greater than that then it will change the size of the uh, grid to six columns per row and for the larger screens 
it is going to have 12 columns per row now let's add the child element that is going to be image in our case so here i have some images that i have saved already car one and i will let me add it first i will copy paste it add two three okay so you can see we have some images let me see what is the width of the grid at this time you can see that it has still uh, placeholders available for the other images so now i will add some classes to these images so first would would be width full so that it could take the 100% width of the available space so for every column there is a specific area that is available for the image to expand so image will automatically automatically expand and take all of the space that is supposed to be available for that column so h32 pixels and object cover so let's see what we have it So now I am going to copy paste this class for all of the images to have consistency. Now you can see that all of the images are looking consistent. So here you can see we defined three columns by default, six at medium screens and 12 at large. The images fill the available space. This gives us a super fast responsive gallery. Let me add a few more images. Now, let's look at that. If you reduce the width, it will automatically become very responsive because of the MD uh, breakpoint that we have added. In the smaller screen, it has three columns. In the larger screen, it is going to have more columns and so on. So you can also change the size here as well. So for example, in the LG, you can have six or do whatever you prefer you can increase the height as well for every image okay you can see this is how it will look with that let me increase actually i did not add the gap yet correctly so let me add it so this is how it will look with the gap that is looking better so that covers the fundamentals of flexbox and css grid with tailwind css the intuitive utilities allow us to build complex responsive layouts faster without writing custom css you can also check out the docs for more examples and advanced techniques i hope that this video was useful for you please don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel and click on the bell icon to get notified for my upcoming videos also please like share and comment this video if you have any questions please leave them in the comment section i will try to respond as soon as possible thanks for watching see you in the next video